Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome back to Egypt. We're in Luxor. Today we are going out to see the Valley of the Kings and a few other spots. This is going to be super interesting. I think this is kind of like the big final see all the last tombs here in Egypt. So as with our entire Egypt tour, everything is so connected well. We're leaving our hotel. We've walked past the pool area, just casually walking to the Nile and a boat is coming to pick us up to take us to the other side of the Nile. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. It's a fun way to start the morning. I wasn't expecting this. They've got these little like carts to take us around. I didn't how big the area was. Yeah. Uh huh. Like that you can't even walk the whole thing. Alright, welcome to the most famous cemetery in the world. We're currently at the Valley of the Kings and today we're going to go inside three of the tombs. I think there's about 62 tombs that they found here so far and I've heard that they are a pretty cool sight to see. If you have a look here, you're just walking down this kind of this alleyway and you'll see signs to different tombs. And they're like literally like carved into the sides of these mountains. Yeah, so this is the valley and then they've just dug in. I actually thought they were always going to be built monuments. I didn't realize they were going to be cut into the side of an actual mountain. Yeah. Also, just as a side note, uh, you can't take your cameras in to take photos or videos unless you buy a photo package. It's 300 Egyptian pounds, so double the price of the entry ticket. Of course, we wanted to take you guys along, so we picked up a ticket. One, two, three. Alrighty, welcome to the entrance of King Ramesses the Ninth. Wow, all the paint's still there. So I guess okay. it's meant to look back in the temples. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. Wow, look at the paint. Wow. I can see yellows and blues. It's like yellow, blues and reds. Wow. All the snakes. Also look on the details on the roof. There's just artwork everywhere inside here. Just there, hieroglyphics. The roof was painted. The roof isn't in the best condition, but these walls is probably the best hieroglyphics we've seen so far. We're not even in his tomb yet, really. This is like an entranceway and we're going lower and lower. So this is the end of the tomb and this is his burial chamber. Wow. Imagine being the archaeologist. That found it? Yeah. This is definitely a lot more comfortable if you are afraid of like claustrophobia oh, yeah, compared to the, really, the pyramids. Yeah, the roof is like super high up. This, like, this almost feels like it was designed for a lot of people to come in. There's so much space to walk around. But then when we're in the pyramids, we will bending down, we're going down tunnels. This is to show you guys just how big the Valley of the Kings are. We caught the little transport in here and then we walked. Came into King Ramesses the ninth. Each of these are numbered to King Valley 21 tomb. And of course the ones with names we probably would recognize, they've actually put the names on there. So you got Ramesses, you got Tutankhamun, which I believe is over there. So we're currently looking at probably the most famous tomb in the world. This is the tomb of Tutankhamun. The reason that this guy is so famous is because, first of all, this was the last tomb that has been found in the Valley of the Kings, and it is the only tomb that was completely 100% intact. They had everything inside, even the gold mask over the mummy, everything. You do have to pay extra to go in here. This is crazy how this entrance. place is right near the entrance. We There's maybe one or two walkways that way. Amazing they never found it till now. Like, not even the Tomb Raiders or anything found it, so... What's super interesting is that even though this is probably one of the most famous pharaohs in the world, he actually wasn't a very good pharaoh. So he was quite sick. He died very young, under the age of 20. He had like a shorter leg and it just, it's so fascinating. I'm sure in the ancient times, them looking at King Tut and thinking, no one will remember you, you're just a forgetful pharaoh. But just because of the circumstances of how this is the last tomb they ever discovered in the 20s, also because everything was intact. You probably heard the conspiracy about the Pharaoh's curse where people who opened up the tomb, they all started dying one after another. So there was a lot of media attention on King Tut, hence why everyone probably remembers his name. Okay, 
Wow, this is definitely like the most colourful room so far. This is what, Ramses IV? Yep. And look how big his like... So what they did was... Uh, almost. So there'd be this giant granite piece and then there would be the sarcophagus and then there'd be the coffin and then there would be the body. It's massive. I know. I wonder how heavy it is to like lift I couldn't this. imagine people... You can even see that they painted this. You can see blue on it. Oh, wow. You can see some blue. It looks like faint veins. Yes. Oh, look how colourful this room is. Yeah. So many stories and scenes on the walls as well. Nice, going to Africa restaurant for lunch. Still not sick of the Egyptian bread. Uh, it's like my favorite thing. Local Egyptian bread. Local traditional Egyptian bread. And what sauce have we got here? Probably baba ganoush, maybe? Baba ganoush? Mm. Ooh, thank oh, thank you. Oh, it's good. Fried eggplant, I don't think I've tried that before. Let's give this a try. Fried eggplant? Mm. Good? Oh yeah. I guess everything fried is usually good. Back across. Back across. We found out there's only one bridge in Luxor, that's why you have to catch these taxis across the Nile. Absolutely, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I know this all on my own. Yeah, she knows everything. We did nothing from alum. Steven's gonna drive the boat. Oh! <laughs> all right, I think we've saved the best for last. This is the last temple we're gonna be seeing here in Egypt and it is the largest ancient monument in the world. It is two kilometer square foot, and this is the entrance. So we have a bunch of sphinxes along the side, body of a lion, head of a ram, and this is like the entrance way. So grand. It took 2,000 years to build. So some of the parts of this building are 4,000 year years old, up to 2,000 years old. 2,000 years? I haven't even heard of this. These sphinx are different to the one that we see at the pyramids, because the one at the pyramid is lion body with the head of the pharaoh. This is the head of a ram. Are so high. So apparently, this is one of the seven new wonders of the world because there are so many columns. There's so many theories on how they got them here, but it's just you look everywhere you look. There's these columns, and they're so tall. You have to go around seven times and then you get good luck. Alrighty guys, we just came back to our hotel and we thought to give you a bit of a room tour because this place is probably the fanciest one we stayed at so far. I still can't believe the accommodation that we get to stay on. This so one's called Sonesta Hotel. Sonesta. Here in Luxor. And yeah, we have like our own little private balcony overlooking the Nile. That has become like a nice recurring theme from this trip. And then this is our room. Yeah, so as you can see, Super nice. We've got some Egyptian painting artwork here. This is the world's biggest bed I've ever seen. It's like two double beds joined together and then then some in the middle. So we've got that. Really comfortable sleep last night. A little bit of a desk. We also have some tea and coffee, which is always good. This has been like the first hotel, I think, that's given us this. And then we just have the bathroom from the future. I mean, we open up the shower and I don't even know what's going on here. Like this is something straight out of Star Trek. There's a spa bath there. I don't know, there's jets here. I still haven't worked it out. Like there's a remote here that's gonna do something. And then it looks like there's an Egyptian style bidet here. I haven't worked that one out yet either, but. Good morning, everybody. It's the next day. It's the end of our time here in Luxor. And now this next part of the trip is gonna feel more of a vacation. The last nine odd days have been crazy from Cairo's in Egypt to an overnight train to two nights on the Felucca. It's been quite non-stop. So it's really nice at the end of the tour, we head down to the Red Sea. So we're going to Haggadah and it's four nights of just relaxing bliss. So we're just chilling on the balcony, enjoying our last glimpses of the Nile. How you doing, Bubs? Good. Good? I'm excited for the Red Sea. Last time we swam in the Red Sea it was in a lap in Israel and it was the best snorkeling we've ever done. So we definitely need to go on like a snorkel trip or something over there. Alrighty, having our first taste of Kagada. We've just come to our hotel and we literally have our own beach at the hotel. This is nice. Yeah, we're at the Red Sea. This is cool. No more Nile. 
Every day we've seen the Nile, no more Nile. Yeah, this is I'm just going to show you the Red Sea. The last time we got the Red Sea was in a lot. We need to go put our Israel. We need to go put our feet in the Red Sea. Yeah, let's go test it out. I don't even think we vlogged a lot. No, we no, didn't. We didn't actually. No. So this is the first time you guys have seen the Red Sea with us. Different to the Dead Sea, which is the floating one. That's how we have our own private little section. Yeah. And we I, for four whole days. I think oh. this is happening yes. sometime. Warm. Really? Yes, completely feeling. Oh, yes. It's so warm. That is super oh. nice. Wow. Hey guys, four nights here. We're going to take a chill. We're going to go do some things with you, but I think we're also going to put the camera down a little bit and relax. And then we'll see you guys in like a couple of days' time. We will show you around the area because this is now, I feel like I'm on holiday. Yes. Three days later. Good evening, everybody. It's the last day on our Egyptian tour here in Hagada, and the last three days has been so unbelievably relaxing. We've just sit on this beach, swam in the pool, and just done nothing. And it's been so good because after the crazy, insane tour we've had, like we've seen and done so much, there's it's been nicer this last four nights is just to relax because you really feel like on vacation. Because sometimes you go on holiday and you do so much that you need a holiday from your holiday. So this has been super nice. This has been our own private beach. This is owned by the hotel that we're staying at, the Marriott. And there's a bit of an island bar, so we can walk across here. We might grab a little drink. We had such a fun day today. We went out on to the Red Sea. We're like, we need to spend at least one day out on the Red Sea. First of all, we saw a gigantic pod of dolphins, which was amazing. Literally, look at this. So everyone was calling us over to the boat, and I thought this was the boat we were <laughs> on. Uh, this is an antique, probably not seaworthy. But we have heard, well, we actually have been in the Red Sea in Israel and it was some of the best snorkeling we have ever done. So I'm excited to go out and see more of it. We found a pot of dolphins. Literally, they're like jump, jump, jump. There's dolphins, jump straight in, and there was about 20 of them. And then after that, we kept like jumping off the boat into the water. Ready, ready, go! sun here now. Is it happy hour tomorrow? Ah, uh, thank you for that. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, okay. Thank you. Just relaxing. Egypt has the best mango juices in the world. Right. Mm-hmm. Officially okay. trying our first seafood here in Haggadah from the Red Sea. Calamari. Pool hotels there. Beaches just there. And this meal was six dollars. Six dollars Australian. So good. Fried calamari. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to share. What? I want to share. The journey back to Cairo begins. Let's do this. Very, very early. <laughs> All 
Alrighty guys, I hope you enjoyed that insane Egyptian series. We loved it. It was one of the funnest trips we have ever done, hands down. And I hope we've convinced you to go to Egypt. It is an amazing country and I'm really excited though for you guys to see the next series. Yeah, so thanks so much for watching. If you are new around here, hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for your support in Egypt. You guys have blown us away, honestly. Thank you guys. We'll see you in the next episode. But yeah, we've actually come to Greece for our one year anniversary and we're about to jump on a catamaran and spend the next seven days sailing through Greece. <laughs>